Yo! Thank you so much for clicking on that video. I appreciate it. I know you do not appreciate the ring light, so the rest of the video does not have it, but I just wanted to let you know that today, Monday, July 2nd, at 6 p.m. Pacific slash 9 p.m. Eastern, I will be doing a live stream on Facebook. I'll leave the link down here below. I'm gonna be playing Fortnite with some followers. I will be answering questions. You can ask me for advice. You can ask me about dating. I don't even know. You know, if it gets personal, so be it, but it can go so many different ways. But I'm also doing some giveaways, so you guys don't wanna miss that. And the reason why we're doing this is just because, you know, on our YouTube channel, we don't really get personal, but it might get personal on the live stream because that's what live chats are for. Like, you just, things, things just happen. People say things randomly. There's no editing. So it's gonna be interesting, but definitely guys, check it out. 6 p.m. slash 9 p.m. Eastern today. I'll see you there. What's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of Asian News Update and now I've actually found a name for this and shout out to the person who commented it. We are going to be calling this AZNN, Asian News, AZN News, Asian News Network, whatever you want to call it. You're going to just dive straight into it because there are some things that we got to talk about. This news article has been going on for years now so we got to talk about it. It is about Harvard being racist against Asian American applicants. Woo! Harvard, yes, one of the most selective and prestigious universities in the entire world is now being sued for keeping their Asian population and admittance at that school purposely at around the 20% mark. So over the past 15 years, the percentage of Asian students at Harvard hasn't really changed a lot. But the amount of Asian students that have applied to Harvard in that 15 years has like doubled. That means they are setting a strict limit on how many Asian or Asian American students they are going to admit into their school. There is some incriminating documentation that has come out of Harvard where they said that Asian Americans rank low, the lowest on the personality test. They're seeing the Asian name, they're reading the essay, looking at the resume, and basically saying Asians lack positive personality. Wait, how do you, all right, here's my question. How do you even judge that? I don't know, but that's their excuse. They're saying the personality actually just means their whole holistic view of the application, meaning their essay and extracurriculars. That's what they're saying makes up the personality. Personality, probably the wrong term to be using, to be honest. So do I think that Harvard has a unwritten rule that they are not going to let their Asian population at their school exceed about the 20% mark. Mm -hmm. I do, I do think that there's definitely some discrimination. I do think that there is some level of unwritten rule where they're kind of talking to each other like, hey, hey, there's kind of a lot of Asian students. Let's like reel it back. It almost hit 23%, let's, let's scale it back. Let's just take out some of those students. Take out the applicant, throw it out. I think there definitely is a little bit of that. Do I think Harvard has an obligation that they should accept every student that academically qualifies? No, because a lot of students academically qualify. Just because you have a perfect GPA and perfect SAT score does not mean you're getting into Harvard. Here's a suggestion, and it would be interesting if Harvard would do this for a year or two, but I'm pretty sure they're not. How about when all the applicants come in, instead of having the names and their assumed gender and race and culture, you just give them numbers. So you disguise the name and you right off the bat, you don't know what ethnicity they are or even what gender they are. That would be really interesting. Either way, long story short, and this is the last thing I'll say about it, uh, definitely I think there should be more Asians at Harvard and Harvard is holding back. So that's why they're getting sued. Anyways, you guys let me know in the comments below what you think about that. Um, there's a few good articles, I'll leave the links down below. But moving on to the next article of the AZNN. To all the boys I've loved before. That is the title of the new Netflix film that is coming out that is not only based off a book written by an Asian American female, but there's also an Asian American female leading that movie. So Jenny Han is the author and Lana Condor is an adopted Vietnamese American actress. So shout out to them. Sounds good, right? Representation, story comes from an Asian. It's portrayed by an Asian, of course. Looks like it's gonna be like a good teen romantic film. However, some people are angry because basically the story is of a half Asian girl in high school who falls in love and has five secret crushes and none of them are Asian. Now the truth is if you are going by the book, there is no Asian guy. 
there's just no Asian guy character. I don't know if it's based off of Jenny's life or a story she made up. She did not write in an Asian guy love interest in the book. I understand that in the Netflix film, there probably shouldn't be an Asian guy. Why would you just force in an Asian guy when it's not written in the book? Now, I don't know if these guys in the book, if these characters have specific ethnicities that they are, but if not, you could have just changed one of the guys that she fell in love with into an Asian guy. Should you be mad? You know what I'm mad at? And, and this kind of goes back to what we've always said on our channel. Basically, in media, what we're used to seeing is just an Asian female swoon and fall in love with everybody but an Asian guy. It's kind of another punch in the gut for Asian guys to be told that, hey, listen, Asian women, they can be seen as whole American human beings that are capable of romance and high school and all these teenage angst emotions that like are regular and real. And then Asian guys, we're left out of it. We're ignored. We don't have feelings. They're essentially calling us like soft skin robots or something. I don't know. Can people fall in love with Asian men? That's my question. I just think it goes back to telling our own story. Listen, whether it's Hollywood, Netflix, you're not gonna rely on them to tell our story. And we need to represent ourselves and Asian guys need to put themselves out there. So you guys leave in the comments below whether you should be mad about it. I'm not gonna tell you that you should be mad about any of this stuff. I'm just trying to report it and give my commentary. Next, an Italian student who's giving a graduation speech in China because he was studying in China, goes viral in China because he thanks not his professors, not other students, he thanks hot water. He was saying, if you're stressed, if you're sick, you're emotionally unstable, lack self-discipline, if you're a f boy, drink hot water. If basically, if you don't know, in Asian culture and specifically Chinese culture, drinking hot water is the all-in-one remedy. This is something that is promoted. Even me growing up, my mom told me to drink hot water. For some reason in America, we're all taught to drink ice water. Then when it comes to just drinking plain Jane hot water, that's all of a sudden kind of weird. Because I remember back in high school, I was at Red Robins, which is by all means a fine casual dining establishment. I ordered hot water from the waitress and all my white friends in high school made fun of me and they were like, what? What, hot, what, why are you? And I was like, I'm just doing what my mom told me to do. I thought it was good for me and it's free. I didn't get any girls in high school. All right, our last article that I'm gonna be covering today is Lil Baby. Yes, one of the hottest rappers out right now. He did this song with Drake. You know what it's called? Yes Indeed, where he goes, Brand new whip, got no keys. Tailor my clothes, no starch, please. It's a really catchy hook. Anyways, Lil Baby blowing up right now. In one of his vlogs, while he's walking around, he's eating watermelon with salt on it. The guy behind the camera that's filming it is like, what? Did you eat, just put salt on it? Lil Baby's like, yeah, yeah, put salt on my watermelon. It was good. And this clip goes viral in Japan because apparently in Japan, it is also very common to eat watermelon with salt on it. Now, Lil Baby actually attributes it to being a down south thing. Obviously, I, I've heard of eating sugar on watermelon, but I had not thought of using salt on watermelon. But it, it, it actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it because salt is a natural flavor enhancer and even an aroma a releaser. So if you sprinkle a flavor enhancer on watermelon, you are enhancing the watermelon, which sounds dope. And Japan, no stranger to flavor enhancers because actually MSG was invented in Japan. And MSG not actually being as bad for you as people think. MSG is just salt 2.0. That makes everything taste just way better. Anyways, thank you so much for watching that AZNN update. For a lot of the articles, check out nextshark.com, but I also did hit up Wall Street Journal and New York Times and LA Times. You know, I had to do a little bit of reading. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. That was the AZNN and then 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 just let me know what you guys think about the series. All right, until next time, we out. Peace.